Now let's take and change gears a little bit. Um, previously we looked at, at top attributes of quality BIM content from a manufacturer's point of view. Let's take a look at it from a Revit user point of view. Now Revit users are concerned with design intent and appropriate level of detail. Uh, adequate number of types, use of parameters, performance is a big deal. Usability, make sure that it's oriented correctly and, and as a recipient of somebody else's data, I don't have to mess around with it too much. I don't have to import it as, you know, from a native file format and then create my own new uh, it's it, it, it can be very cumbersome and it can be a lot to ask from one of your potential customers to make them manipulate or worse yet, make them redraw um, something that you uh, potentially already have modeled anyway. And then things like rendering quality, um, scheduling, uh, all of those uh, points are very important from a Revit user's point of view. Now, let's go ahead and, and, and chart this out. Top attributes of BIM quality content. And I've combined some of the key elements of uh, you know, from a manufacturer's point of view as well as from a Revit user's point of view. And if we take a look at the top uh, content attributes, appropriate level of detail, memory footprint, ease of use, and, and, I've and, and if you go across the top there, we've got various uh, tools at our disposal. So we have in the Inventor AutoCAD LT Suite. Uh, and within that we have a tool set called AEC Exchange and, and a lot of the examples that you'll see in the corresponding videos will go in depth as to what is AEC Exchange, what are some of the functionality put into that. Um, and then of course we have Inventor uh, with the AEC Exchange tool set and then we have um, you know, some of the comp our, our competitive software, so SolidWorks Pro e Katia, and exchanging information, BIM content, uh, via a neutral file format and we'll just, we'll just go ahead and choose the SAT file format um, which, which you know, seems to work pretty well from a geometry standpoint, but as, as, as we'll see, maybe doesn't quite achieve some of the uh, desired results that we want when it, as it pertains to BIM content. However, taking some of that uh, data, that manufacturing data from uh, SolidWorks, Pro, Ecotia, what have you, through Inventor's AEC Exchange tool set, See, Inventor has a bunch of native translators, so we can open up native SOLIDWORKS parts, native PROE parts, and then utilize some of the tools within the AAC Exchange toolset to simplify the data, add appropriate connection points, and provide uh, a, uh, an ADSK file um, that will create a native Revit, uh, Revit file. And then, of course, we have far on the right there, we've got native Revit family files. So what if I'm a manufacturer and I want to model my components natively inside of Revit to provide BIM content. And then of course we have uh, the Seek that, that I talked about earlier using content creation services to essentially create native, native, native Revit families. And if we look at the appropriate level of detail, small memory footprint, and I'm looking at the first one here, it looks like Inventor LT, I can achieve most of my uh, desired results as it pertains to uh, BIM content utilizing the AC Exchange tool sets in both Inventor LT and Inventor. As we get closer to the bottom, however, uh, in the 2010 set of products, design intent, adequate number of types, certainly flexible use of parameters and rendering quality, I cannot achieve those utilizing the AC Exchange tool set. But, you know, we'll talk a little bit about why that happens here later on in the presentation. And then, in, you know, my estimation of, uh, uh, of utilizing SAT as a uh, uh, exchange medium to provide BIM content. I don't believe we can achieve a lot of our uh, desired results um, as it pertains to those uh, top attributes if we use SAT as an exchange medium. However, if we take that native SOLIDWORKS Pro Ecotia uh, information, publish it through Inventor via the AC Exchange toolset, I believe we can we can create uh, or we can we can at least address most of those uh, attributes. And over here on the right, you know, as you can see, everything's green. And, and, and from a manufacturing point of view, if I look at this chart all by itself, you, you're saying, hey, Rob, uh, <laughs> looks like I need to use Revit then to create BIM content. Now, let's, let's, let's put that into perspective here. Are you in the business of creating BIM content or are you a manufacturer? And we really have to find that balance because with Inventor, Inventor uh, LT, uh, in SOLIDWORKS Pro Ecotia, you know, you look over at this top manufacturing content attributes, I need to be able to create finite element analysis. I need to be able to perform motion analysis. I need to be able to create 2D manufacturing documentation for models. I need to drive CNC directly from the model. All of those things are what manufacturing-based applications do very well. And, of course, Inventor 
uh, in our digital prototyping strategy to do it better than anybody else, of course. But uh, but as you can see over here on the right, we'll rev it and seek. Well, I'm not going to be able to do any of those things. So what am I trying to say? There is no one single direction to BIM. You have to take into account all of the tools that are available today and determine based upon your available technology, based upon your timeline, funding, all of those things need need to be taken into account to determine your route to provide your customers the BIM content they're asking for. Balance your objectives with the time required to achieve them. If I want to create my entire product line up on Seek, that's a different timeline than taking one of my existing 2D submittal drawings, converting them to 3D and maybe say Inventor LT, and adding all the appropriate metadata, connection points, and, and so on and so forth, I can do that within the hour. I can provide, using that workflow, a customer, a BIM content of, of my product within the hour, where on the other hand, publishing, hey, I've got, I'm have got, i a window manufacturer, and I want all of my windows to be available to architects directly in inside of Revit. Well, that is on a different timeline. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about here when it, when it, when it, when it comes to determining how you as a manufacturer are going to address the needs of your customers as it pertains to BIM content.